Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here on the eastern end of Long Island and then beyond. And today with us, we have Diane Benson, President of the Board of the Long House Reserve. But before I introduce Diane, I want to speak a few words about philanthropy. Well, what is philanthropy exactly? Philanthropy is the love of mankind. And who can be a philanthropist? Well, anyone can be a philanthropist. It's about giving time, knowledge, and then available resources. Diane, welcome to Successful Philanthropy. And can you tell me a little bit about the Longhouse Reserve here in East Hampton? Well, it's difficult to say a little bit about Longhouse because there's so much to say. But Longhouse Reserve primarily is a 16-acre uh, pleasure garden that is studded with art, not garden variety art, but true art. Um, more or less permanently, we have a beautiful William de Kooning bronze, and we have a Buckminster Fuller dome that is very iconic for us, and Sal Witt, and we have many, and Yoko Ono's Play It by Trust, which is an all-white chess set. Um, and then every season, we rotate art. We uh, Artists come to us and we invite artists to, um, to show their outdoor work. Everything is, we do not show any indoor work. Everything is outdoor. So let me just backtrack. So this is a beautiful garden with pieces of sculpture. And Longhouse Reserve, therefore, is a sculpture garden. And it's open to the public, correct? Um, yes. And how many days a week are you open? Right now, we are open. We have been open since mid-June during the pandemic. We are open on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoon from 1 to 5 o'clock. And uh, our website is very easy. It is longhouse.org. And uh, it is very easy to make a reservation. We are receiving about 45 people a, a time slot. We have 16 acres. So we figure three people an acre is a very safe, safe social distancing. And, um, and, nice. we, and we give each reservation slot about, an, I think, an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and a half, maybe. Which is enough time to get through the whole park, Because if you, if you take your time and you are, are eager to see it all, it's a, it's a very, um, particularly during these, this time of the pandemic, it's very uplifting and spiritual. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are pathways that wander and there are out of the way places and more obvious places. And nice. So you mean if you're on a date, you might want to go to Longhouse Reserve and maybe find a little a corner somewhere. Oh, and yes. <laughs> There's lots of very nice, nice little niches. Nice. Well, tell, tell our viewers a little bit about the history of Longhouse Reserve. How did this begin and, and, and what is it all about? I mean, this sounds like a magnificent place. Is it a state park? Is it a no, no, town no. of this East Hampton a, Park? Is th or is this a private place? What exactly is it? Well, it is a private enterprise. It was founded by Jack Leonard Larson um, many years ago, 70 years ago. He had the idea to buy acreage here on Hans Creek Road in East Hampton, and he bought over a short period of time, he bought 25 acres. He developed the first 10 acres when we could say he was in his more tribal mode. Okay. And he built, it was called Roundhouse, and he built beautiful gardens and ponds and everything, the swimming pool, the houses, the buildings, the raised garden beds, everything was round. And that was for him? It was his home. His home, right. And, and it had this, it has this vibrant feeling of, of color, of, of color of Africa. And, um, and as he lived there through the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, he began developing the other 16 acres. Yes. And, um, and as he traveled and as he saw the world and has, he's a, an incredibly global man and as his influences shifted when he started to envision what he was going to do with the rest of his property he was in much more uh, a sort of a a zen japanese 
state of nice, mind. Nice, right? And, um, and he dreamed up Longhouse, which is based on the, an Issei shrine, uh, a Issei temple at Issei, Japan, and it's a, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous building, and it is modeled on this um, temple, and it's um, it's a well, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful home. So he developed. So while he was lived at Roundhouse, he developed began developing the gardens and planning the house. And then it was time to actually, when he had solidified his ideas, it, he sold Roundhouse to wonderful people, uh, uh, Judy and Ennius Bergsma, who loved Roundhouse for what it was and have basically maintained it exactly as he dreamed it and built it. But I'm a little confused. So is Roundhouse part of Long no. House Reserve or is it a private It, it home? is a totally private home okay, to so our then, neighbors. Right, your neighbors. neighbors. But meanwhile, he took 16 acres. So and the 16 acres have that are now the, uh, the uh, Long House. Right, and I understand that um, Mr. Larson uh, formerly was a, a very famous textile designer and and that he took his love of art and nature and textiles and created this place and that he's done this so that other people can enjoy it and now it's public and in the future he's leaving it um, to the charity, correct? So that, Which is so wonderful. Here we have a man who really is an amazing philanthropist by taking not only his um, resources, but his home and giving that to charity. We see a lot of that in Europe, in France, with many of the chateaus. Yes. Um, people, it's a little bit different. People, in many cases, uh, these chateaus have been in the families for maybe uh, 500 years, and these families, they're very, very large, and they can't afford to maintain them. And they decide, out of the goodness of their heart, that they're going, instead of selling it, that they'll stay there, but that they'll keep it open to the public so that these beautiful chateaus are available for all to see because it's part of the history of France. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the same with the National Trust in England. Yes, I mean. and, and so here we have um, uh, Mr. Larson, John Larson, doing something Jack very uh, sim similar and, and, and well, very, the whole very, idea so he's was leaving. To create a his uh, legacy, right? Well, his, yes, his legacy. But it's, um, you know, our, our mission is to show how you can live your life with art and how every choice you make, from whether what it is you grow in your garden or hang on your wall or how you approach culture or um, how you invite, what kind of intellectualism you invite, because aside from him being a textile designer, he was also a founding member of the American Craft Museum, and he's been totally involved in craft and the arts. And so Wonderful. he's brought this sensibility to Longhouse, and, and you know, we, we display it. The most important thing is, is to share it. And you know, Agreed. I mean, if, you, if we can grow it in our garden, on Long Island, you can grow it in your garden yes. on Long Island. I mean, that is one simple lesson, but but probably our the thrust of our mission is um, is education. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we have we have very hardworking, wonderful committees. You know, we have an arts committee that makes the decisions about mm -hmm. the art, mm -hmm. and uh, and a garden committee who makes the, carries out the decisions about the garden and an education committee. And then you have programs for children, correct? Well, when they want to come in and um, well, we learn about we art and, and, and the beautiful gardens. And so that's what I love. I love that uh, this place is open to everybody because you know, many people, we might want to live with a lot of art and big gardens, but most of us can't afford to live on 16 acres. I certainly can't. And so it's so nice that this is open and um, to everyone. I really love that. And tell me, I understand you have a lot of, um, or you're very interested in diversity and you have diversity programs. And right now, um, this is particularly important uh, to our world, racial justice. And, and what are you doing exactly to promote well, diversity? Well, we're not doing anything different than we've always done. Um, 
But I think we have just recently, um, I think people are more aware of it. I mean, if we, if we go back in, in the 21st century, since we've had our programming, and you look at the art we've displayed on our grounds and the people we have honored at our benefits and the children that we have given scholarships to, it is just a complete map of the world, you know? I mean, um, ev ev everything, every race, every Mm -hmm. color, every kind of people wonderful. Have, have always been a part of Longhouse because it's all how Jack sees the world. And this, um, this idea of living with art in all its forms, all its forms encompasses everything, you know? Well, we have artists from all backgrounds and all cultures and it's nice that uh, Jack has um, showcased um, the art of different uh, people from different cultures and uh, different um, races and that's I think really really important and that makes him again someone with a vision and 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 someone who has an eye on our world and what's important to our world and now tell me about um, your newest installation outside because now ah. with the pandemic all of us are looking for outdoor activities and so Longhouse Reserve is particularly special because we don't have to be inside to see all of this beautiful art and these beautiful gardens and with summer and then fall this is an ideal place for families to go to and then couples or or just a, a small group of, of, of friends but um, you have some new inst a new installation that you're well, very excited about, and I know our listeners and our viewers want to hear about it. Well, this, um, you know, we had a we had a whole art program planned for this season, which we've not been able to implement for all the reasons that are obvious. But we have been able to introduce this one monumental piece of art called uh, the Chinese zodiac, the circle of animals, by the Chinese artist Ai Weiwei who is probably, of all the Asian artists in the world, he's probably the most well-known. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible activist, you know, and he was detained in China for, for several years, but he continu continued to speak out when, when, um, when China hosted the Olympics and they made that incredible big dome, if anybody remembers that, he, yes. he designed that. Yes. So they revere him in China, but they're afraid of him because he speaks his mind. So this Chinese zodiac circle of animals is a, a bronze, tw a series of 12 bronzes that are normally shown in a very um, m almost militaristic fashion. And they've, they've been in, in several museums and important places in the world already. Um, and we are thrilled to have them. And instead of putting them on high pedestals and in a straight line, and we have, um, it was Jack Larson's idea to forget the pedestals and install them right on the ground, the animals themselves, around our amphitheater. So and now actually, there are 12 animals. There are 12 right. animals. And I understand you have a video yes. about this installation that we're going to show our viewers. And so um, I think we can stop for a second and, and just I think it would be wonderful if show you the video so that we can all see uh, what uh, Diane is referring to Diane, um, 
so you have other installations that are very important in the world, and can you tell us about a few of them and, and why, why people come from far and wide to see these installations? Well, you know, the gardens themselves, um, you know, there, there, are, there are several wonderful sculpture parks. You know, Storm King is, is the closest, but they don't have the intimacy of our gardens. And our gardens are not as um, pre predictable as a sculpture park. I don't know quite how to say it. It's a, it's a, a merging of the, the gardens and the sculptures and the, and the various artists and the way it flows together that m makes Longhouse so unique. And it's know. filled with surprises. Filled with surprises. <laughs> so you, when you walk through, you may see something that you're not expecting to see. Uh, and very so often. you're startled. And, and I've been there, and I just fell in love with Longhouse Reserve. And of course, it, and it's seasonally, you know, I mean, and we'd like to, we, we, don't, we, we do have our things that, like the Buckminster Fuller Dome and, and the chess set and things that do remain. But we like to, we always move the art around, the art that we have, and we, to give a fresh perspective, to, to we, we never want people to say, oh, oh, Longhouse, I've been there. So you change it so that when so people come it. back, it's a new experience. We so change it's about, it all the time. And I love that. It's about experiencing something new and, and beautiful. And then with the changing um, exhibitions, but people of course, have the opportunity to experience something new. Now, part of this show is about volunteering. And oh. most of the people oh. involved with philanthropy that are watching, most of us, um, we give our time, we give our knowledge. And when we have available resources, uh, philanthropists give uh, their available resources. Diane, how can people get involved? Uh, what are the volunteer opportunities at Longhouse Reserve? Oh, we welcome our volunteers. We depend totally on our volunteers and our docents to, um, to, to open to the public for them to explain things to people. But most of all, we, in a normal season, we welcome at least 3,000 school children. How fabulous. And for free, of course. So and you're a real educational oh, that's, spot it's and our highlight thrust. on the Eastern End. It's our thrust. And, and each child that comes gets two guest passes so they can bring their family back. Nice. And it is so wonderful sometimes to see the kids bring their their aunt or their uncle or their father or mother and say, oh, wait till you see this. I'm going to show you this. Wait till you see what's around this corner. And we have beautiful um, brochures that we pass out for the kids to engage them with the art and engage them with the gardens and to make, to make it more vivid and more of a, an, an experience. So you create this educational experience and then you create a bonding experience between a child and then maybe his parents or a brother and an aunt. What a lovely thing to do by giving these free uh, tickets to the children. I think that's so important. And, yeah. and, and, and then the child is educating someone about art and I love that. And now you also have um, ways, I mean of course you're a charity and all charities need to uh, raise funds for mm. th their operations otherwise the charity can't continue uh, moving forward and so naturally I hear you're involved in an, in an art campaign or an art auction and that's in place of your annual gala. And right. I remember always uh, Long House Reserve, you've always had a beautiful gala unfortunately I have never been able to attend because I've been chairing the Southampton Animal Shelter Gala, which is every year the same night. I've always wanted to go to your party, but you can't do that this year. So what are you doing this year? Well, I brought a few of the, I mean, we take our benefit seriously and full of, of joy, you, have to. you know, and we um, try to make it a real experience. But this year, obviously, we were hoping we might be able to resurrect it and do it in September, but the closer September comes, it seems less likely. So our gala would have been last Saturday night. And um, because we couldn't, and we always have an auction that goes with, uh, th that we 
show the install the same time as the benefit. Um, so this year we have an auction all by itself, totally digital, and we are, are working with artsy.net, and um, it is, but it's, it's so Longhouse, this auction. We've, number one, we've called it Longhouse Shares because we thought in this time of pandemic, asking the artists to contribute, um, that we, should, we are sharing it with the artists. If the artist chooses, we are sharing the proceeds 50% with the artists or with the donors, whoever they might be, or to whatever charity they might want it to go to, aside from Longhouse. Um, and it's not only art, it's not only flat art for the wall, it is beautiful ceramics. There are, um, there's a fantastic Ai Weiwei rabbit. It's our, it's our biggest piece. A question, um, how many pieces are in this auction? A lot, there are 180 lots, but, they, oh, wow. but they're not only art, there's also, uh, there's ceramics and there's um, furniture, very like, nice. important furniture, there's a Nakashima table. There's, it's, a, it, it's a real reflection of Longhouse, this auction, because it's extremely eclectic. diverse and yes. eclectic. Mm -hmm. Interesting, and so, and then what about for our viewers who um, can't afford necessarily to bid on a piece of art or, and they just want to give something? Um, and you welcome that, of course, well, because of course. I know auctions and art items, even furniture can be very, very expensive. And naturally, if you're online and the entire world can bid, these prices can go way up. So. Um, well, what can people huge, do? I mean, it's a do you huge welcome small gifts, $50, oh, $100? Oh, of course we do. Of okay. course we do. And, and we have, I mean, I, there, there are many ways to give to Longhouse. I mean, uh, by volunteering. of course, money, of course. Yeah. But, um, but by vol and, and all these committees that I mentioned and, and our board and everything, I mean, that is all um, donated. That's all yes. people's time, you know, I mean, and well, people's talent. Well, you're a volunteer, talent. right? Yes. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm a very busy volunteer. And that is so admirable. So, so people, anyone who wants to get involved with Longhouse Reserve, there are many ways. One, you can volunteer your time and your knowledge, and people underestimate the value of those two wonderful assets. And then, of course, money. And right now, with so many people out of work across the United States, many, of, uh, many people are in a position where they can't write big checks. And so never think that what you're going to offer, your time, your knowledge, and then even a small gift doesn't mount to anything because collectively, all of this creates Longhouse Reserve with people like Diane Benson, who is a wonderful volunteer, and I'm sure you, you donate and you bring in resources. And then um, Jack Larson, who is the, the founder and, and the creator. And then all of, all of us can be involved. We can enjoy the beautiful gardens, the beautiful sculpture, and then we can get involved. And really, I, I think it's wonderful. And just a little bit about you. I was reading, Diane, that you um, are a former uh, fashion person. You had different boutiques and yes. you actually brought people um, or, or helped uh, fashion designers uh, get started and sort of put them on the map in New York City. And, and that shows what kind of person you are. She's, here we have a woman who is involved with philanthropy, with many things I've heard in East Hampton, and then also the fashion world, and or was involved in the fashion world. And um, you are a prime example of someone who has really taken her life, gone from business to philanthropy, and you're making a huge difference. And I think it's wonderful. And then a Longhouse Reserve is doing so many great things for the people here on the eastern end of Long Island. And one more question. Do you have online programs? Any, any, can people see the art if they can't oh, come yes. in? Oh, yes. Longhouse.org. It's a wonderful website. You can have a, you can have a, a, a serious immersion into the different parts of the garden and see the art and see the art that we've shown in the past several years but also the education uh, application on our website you know I mean it's um, many of the programs and the 
what we offer to the teachers and to the schools and the administrators is outlined on our website and how our scholarship program works. Our scholarships, I mean, we're building up and we're hoping to make them bigger and bigger. Um, but right now they are, uh, we give four $3,000 scholarships a year. And, um, Wonderful. And they're open to, uh, I think they're open to anyone. I think the only criteria is that you will have been to Longhouse and submitted to our student annual, which is our, another thing we were not able to do this year, but it's our, in June, we have a, a fantastic uh, event for the kids from the first grade to graduating high school seniors. And we award blue ribbons in all the various categories. And so when they come, when these 3,000 kids come, when they're, however they're moved, if they're moved to make a dance or write a poem or make a sculpture or whatever, it has influenced them. And then we judge them and we have a beautiful day and we make an exhibition of all their work, which we leave up for a week. And it's, and it's thrilling and you know, and all the parents come and the kids are so proud and we're so proud and it's. I love that you're really uh, training the next generation or encouraging the next generation to be creative, artistic, and then to appreciate nature and art. So we're just about running out of time and um, just give us the website again for Longhouse Resort. Longhouse.org. It's well, very easy, and we welcome you. Well, thank you very much. And we we'll welcome you very much. Thank you, Diane Benson, and uh, thank you all for tuning in this week to hear and learn about Longhouse Reserve. And I hope you'll learn more and make a visit to the gardens and see what we're talking about, because Diane really has done an outstanding job as board president. and in educating and thank you very much. Well, thank for you this. very much. We have a wonderful team and everybody's very appreciative to, to uh, be able to share it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.